What's up everyone, it's Dakota and welcome back to another modern video and while everybody is messing around with jewelry and all different kinds of rings and archery and all that boring stuff in modern, we have a classic and probably slowly taking over rhinos as one of the best cascade decks in the format. So we're going to look at Living In and some of the improvements that it's made with the Lord of the Rings set that came out a few weeks ago. Obviously it'd be easy to go to the route of some of the other decks that are playing like the One Ring, which seems to be some of the new uh, hottest tech that you can play in the modern format. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna go a different route. We're gonna we're gonna talk about the ring, you know, later this week. But uh, today I wanted to go over Living End and just kind of how crazy of a transformation that this deck has taken with the Lord of the Rings set coming out. Of course, uh, before I get into any of that, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, uh, please consider subscribing and ring the notification bell so you know when videos like this and others get posted. And of course, if you go follow the links in the description down below, you'll find uh, a link to the deck list, you'll find my Twitch channel, and you'll find the Discord server as well. Feel free to follow those, follow me on Twitch and all that great stuff. So... Living End, of course, for the uninitiated, uh, at this point, I think I've done like a few videos on it, but uh, the idea of like the Living End deck, it follows the same way as like Rhinos wants to do. Uh, it's essentially trying to cheat a very powerful spell uh, in a way that is not meant to be played and try to win the game. So in this case, we're using Living End. Living End says each player exiles all creature cards from their graveyard. They sacrifice all the creatures they control, and they put all cards that were exiled this way onto the battlefield. So essentially, it's swapping the graveyard and the battlefield, and it tries to do this in as much of a one-sided way as possible. In the past, it was a little bit harder for decks to get creatures in the graveyard without having the like thought seize themselves, or you know, discard a hand size, or maybe like the random deck playing like a street wraith or whatever. Living End is specifically built around getting creatures in the graveyard, and one of the easiest ways it does that is with the cycling ability or mechanic, whatever you want to call it. So, like Architect of Wills, for example, you pay a blue or a black, you can discard this card and draw a card. So this deck kind of has uh, two different uh, engines, if you will, going on. So it gets to discard these creatures uh, to like their own ability by paying mana and then getting to discard the card to then draw a card which means that uh in most combo decks you want to keep like say a, a shardless agent or you want to have like a violent outburst in hand this deck actually allows you to keep hands that are maybe like maybe one or two lands but you are playing 15 lands so very rare that you're going to probably have two lands in hand but you know you're allowed to keep these one two land hands and then you have you know these cycling creatures that you can just put into the graveyard and then eventually you're going to end up drawing your violent outburst or your shardless agent and being able to cascade from there of course picking up some lands along the way um, we did talk about some of the Lord of the Rings cards actually making it into the deck, and while cards like the One Ring, Delighted Halfling, and Bowmaster aren't in this list, mainly because uh, two of them uh, would get hit off the Cascade, the other one actually being too slow for this deck, and probably being too mana intensive at 4 mana, uh, you have Generous Ent and Oliphant, uh, if it'll decide to come up to us. Uh, and they both have a Mountain Cycling 1, and Generous Ant has a 4 Cycling 1. Essentially meaning that you can pay 1 and discard this card, to then search your library for a Forest card and put it to your hand. Uh, with Mountain Cycling, it's the same thing, but with a Mountain. Which is what allows you to play 15 lands, because all you need is 1 land, and you have 6 of these cards that can go search for your missing piece. So with the Oliphant, uh, you can go get a Mountain, you can go get the Stomping Grounds, you now have the green and red mana for the Violent Outburst. The Generous Ent, you can go and get Breeding Pool or you know your Stomping Grounds and things like that, or even your Basic Forest if you need it. And you then have access to Shardless Agent or, again, Violent Outburst if you so choose to. Uh, and that's really like the big addition for this deck is the fact that now it has a card that can specifically search for a land, you know, and continue this chain of like hitting your land drops, uh, getting up to three mana on turn three, and just putting a uh, living end on the stack and potentially just winning the game from there. Of course, you have the usual suspects. You have grief, which you can then uh, obviously pitch to then. Oh, 
thought sees your opponent, maybe get rid of like a force negation, a counter spell, a uh, chalice, you know, on turn one, something of that nature that could interact with your plan to just cast a free living end. Uh, you have like a curator of mysteries, a really efficient 4-4 you know, flyer. You have strip riverwinder, one of the hardest uh, cycling creatures to get rid of, just the fact that it's hexproof. And being a 5-5 is actually pretty big when most of the format, or even now, is like, uh, casting like bow masters and things like that and you know it takes like multiple creatures to really gang up and take this big serpent down of course you have like waker of waves which makes up your opponent attacking even harder even if you know they get a creature or two back from like the living end uh so you have like these same like idiots uh you just have uh six other creatures that can essentially smooth out your draw a little bit and while you're like cycling through your deck you know eventually you're going to hit one of these or you're going to hit another land you're going to get up to that three mana and then you're going to just have you know a big five seven and a six four trampling creature and whenever it attacks you actually give another creature plus two plus oh and trample which uh could solve a pr well does solve a problem for you know this deck because a lot of the times like you have some decks that can just kind of like chump block for a turn or two, and then eventually that like allows them to like turn the corner on Living End. Uh, and with Living End, of course, you are a pretty bad deck after you do your thing. Or like the Rhinos deck, you know, if you cast like two or three uh, Crashing Footfalls, you know, that's that's great. You know, that's a ton of power that you add to the board. With Living End, you don't really want to Living End more than once because it's going to be the most unfair Living End. Like, you're going to uh, wrath your opponent's board, then you're going to, like, you're basically going to, like, flip-flop them. You're going to Uno reverse them. You're going to, you're going to have a board that they're not going to have a board. But if they can somehow stop the board that you've created, it gets harder to Living End because now they're going to start getting creatures back and you got to fill up your own graveyard then and so on. So with this, uh, Oliphant actually gives you the ability to kind of punch through some more damage and uh, get through those precious points to uh, ultimately win, win the game. Um, finally, you have a Force Negation in here as like a way to interact with your opponent, not on your turn. So when you try to go to like Violent Outburst, you know, if... If you so choose to, uh, you have a Force Negation backup, which will allow you to pitch a blue card to then counter the opponent's uh, counter spell, or, you know, what other interaction they could have, and then uh, exiling it as well, so they don't get any, like, delirium things with, uh, like, Dragon Rage Channeler, or, you know, uh, like, Traverse, things like that. Uh, or access, like, Snapcaster Mage and stuff. I don't know, modern players are weird, they like to play with bad cards. Uh, of course, we said 15 lands. Uh, you can't get Botanical Sanctum, but it is an untapped land uh, in the early turns of the game. You have this basic forest, this basic island. You don't really need a basic mountain in the deck, just because you want, to, want the island for, like, Blood Moon. You have Otawara as, like, one of the key utility lands that you can just go and kind of pick something back up of yours or your opponent's. Uh, you have uh, Steam Vents that you can go search with the Oliphant, the Stomping Grounds, and the Breeding Pool you can get with both the Ent and the Oliphant. Uh, and a sunken ruin is like a way to like it kind of help filter your mana uh, into like those double blue. Um, kind of interesting, I think that it's this one when you probably could have had any of the other filter lands. But you know, I'm I'm definitely not the uh, living end expert. It's a deck that is super fun to play. Uh, Cascade always has like this interesting build around of trying to interact with what the opponent's doing. And, of course, like, still trying to enact your game plan of just, you know, f putting a bunch of idiots into play and winning the game, hopefully, in one or two attacks. And uh, the deck has only gotten better for the fact that now that you ha are playing less lands, you are very much more likely to just keep drawing into creatures and be able to pull off bigger living ends, which, you know, in the past, this deck generally didn't have to do but i think with the format kind of getting a little bit faster uh some of these cards are able to kind of like tempo your opponent enough to where you can bring back five six seven eight creatures and just push through you know all those points of damage in like one or two swings and win the game and just absolutely decimate your opponent's board short of them having like an endurance or something like that so that is the living end deck for modern uh, of course i think always just very powerful when people aren't expecting it living end is one of those decks where you definitely want to win game one and i think with people like playing like the one ring you kind of fall into that trap of like you can't beat them outside like they essentially are going to get a turn 
with it, but if I think if you ever get an opening now with this deck to actually attack and deal a massive amount of damage, it's going to be very hard for your opponent to actually win the game. Of course, they're also going to have to try to resolve it through like four force negation in a deck that you know is willing to tap out and able to draw you know a bunch of cards to try to find that force of negation and everything. So uh, I think this deck uh, has kind of what you want to beat the One Ring, and I think is definitely a deck worth looking into and picking up and playing if you so choose to. I mean, it's a, it's a lot of fun. Living End is always fun, and just about every era that it's been, that it's been relevant in, you just got to be okay with losing to Graveyard Hate some amount of the time, which I don't think happens nearly as often now with these newer versions than it did back in the day. So that's going to do it for me in this video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, of course, leave a like on the video. Uh, comment down below if there's another modern deck that you want to see or if you have any experience with the Living End deck. I would love to hear about it. Of course, uh, subscribe and ring the notification bell so you know when more videos like this and other Pioneer videos and SA-type videos get posted. And, of course, go into the description and follow the links as well to all of the social stuff to, you know, stay in the loop of just hopefully the constant flow of content that's me coming from here on out. So that's going to do it for me. I hope you all enjoyed the video and hope to see you all in the next one.